Okay, so two days ago, we were learning how to write absolute value equations. Okay, we're talking about how we can uh, use an equation with absolute value to write down the, uh, to describe both the maximum and minimum. I hope you still remember that it was X minus the, the midpoint, remember the midpoint? Okay, the average or the midpoint. And that is equal to the, the difference, okay? So, um, so we have that, okay? Now, so if you look at the question right here, uh, if, X, if absolute value of X is equal to three, what could, be, what could X be to make this statement true? Any suggestion? X could be negative three. Because absolute value of negative three would give you three and three is equal to three. That would be a true statement. Do we have another one? Three. So we would say, or X could equal to three because it could be either one and we don't know which one has to be the ones that we use the or right here. Okay. So are we good in terms of uh, making the statement true? Yeah. Okay. Now, the next question is, oh, now let's make it a little bit more complicated, just a little bit. We say absolute value of X plus one is equal to three. Now, pay attention to the question. The question here says, it's not asking for X, it's asking for X plus one, which is the thing right here, sitting in between the absolute value symbol. So we're asking, what could X plus one be? What well, X plus one could be? You're getting ahead of yourself. I'm not asking what X is. I'm asking what X plus one, this thing right here, it could be three. Now, if you're answering two or negative four, you are answering what X is. But I'm asking what? What could this thing be? This thing right here, x plus one could be three or So can you see how we, through this thought process, we remove the absolute value symbol? When we remove the absolute value symbol, we are actually thinking like, ah, what could this thing X plus one be? Well, X plus one could be three, X plus one could be negative three. Well, if that is the case, what could X be? X could be two, X could be negative four. So I need, to, I need you to understand that what you are answering. And just uh, slide in a little bit about SAT. They could ask you some questions like this. They may not ask you what X is, but they ask you what, in this case, what X plus one is. Do you understand the difference in those two questions? Okay, I'm not asking you initially what X is. I'm asking you what X plus one is. So X plus one could be three or negative three. What's the problem here? Yes. It shouldn't be negative. It cannot be negative, right? What is the minimum value over here? What's the least value that it could be? Zero, right? So how do we put this? Can everyone see the problem here? Because when we have absolute value of X, not X, by the way, it's the whole thing. The absolute value of X must be, oh, the language is very strong here, it must be zero or greater. Can everyone see why it has to be zero or greater? Okay. So, we can also make another statement. We can say 
Well, in this case, no value of x could ever make this statement true. Okay, no value of x. Okay, whatever you try to put in here. Okay, think of all possible values that you can come up with. None of those would make this statement true if you just entertain the idea. Is that simple? Easy? Conceptually? Okay. So this is the introduction of how to solve absolute value equations. Okay, so we have to consider what are the likely outcomes and usually we have two possible outcomes okay, and in the short moments we're going to do some problems down below and we'll see those uh, how we work out those equations. Okay.